State officials, city officials getting ready to do that update. Let's listen in. Today I'm just going to talk about our speaking program. We're going to have Dr. Allison Arwadi, Commissioner, Department of Chicago Public Health. Dr. Jennifer Layden, Chief Medical Officer, Illinois Department of Public Health. And Andrew Velasquez, Managing Deputy Commissioner for Operations, Safety and Security, Chicago Department of Aviation. With that, I'm going to hand it off right away to uh, Dr. Awadi. Doctor. Thank you, Rich. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Allison Arwadi. I'm the Commissioner at the Chicago Department of Public Health. This morning, the CDC announced confirmation of the second case of novel coronavirus in the U.S. and the first in Illinois. The patient is a Chicago resident, and my team at the Chicago Department of Public Health is working in close coordination with the CDC, the Illinois Department of Public Health, the Cook County Department of Public Health, and many other partners at the local, state, and national level to ensure a coordinated response. I particularly want to thank Mayor Lightfoot and her office, who have been in constant communication and fully engaged in supporting our collaborative efforts to keep keep the public safe and informed. I will tell you some more about the patient in a minute, but I want to start by stating clearly that this is a single travel associated case, not a local emergency. We obviously take emerging viruses very seriously, and there are still many unanswered questions about this novel virus. But I can reassure you that even with this Chicago case, the health risk to the general public from novel coronavirus remains low at this time, both nationally and in Chicago. Chicago has been building its public health preparedness systems for years, and we have a solid response plan in place. There is no need for the general public to change their behavior in any way based on this news. The patient is a woman in her 60s. Most importantly, I'm pleased to report that she is clinically doing well and is in stable condition. She traveled to Wuhan, China in late December and returned to the U.S. on January 13th. A few days after arriving home, the patient began to feel unwell. She called ahead to alert her doctor to her illness, rather than just presenting to a clinic or emergency department. This is exactly what any potentially ill returning traveler from Wuhan should do. Call ahead and seek medical care. This patient's doctor's office appropriately asked about travel history and quickly put a mask on the patient, helping limit the potential risk of spreading infection. Her doctor then referred her directly to a hospital with infection control capabilities for further workup. Again, this is exactly what we've been educating local health care providers to do. Ask about travel history and reach out to your local public health department to discuss any ill patients with recent travel to Wuhan, China. Hospital staff then placed her in the appropriate setting for infection control, performed a full clinical workup, including ruling out more common viruses like influenza, and worked with public health to arrange testing for novel coronavirus at CDC. The patient is clinically doing well. She is currently in stable condition and remains hospitalized primarily for infection control. While we will be following her course closely, the patient's story so far highlights the way public health messaging and awareness are working locally, as well as the importance of coordination and awareness in the clinical setting. The patient has been very helpful as we've been gathering information about her contacts in recent days. She was not symptomatic when flying. And based on what we know now about this virus, our concern for transmission before symptoms develop is low. So that is reassuring. She has limited close contacts, all of whom are currently well and who will be monitored closely for symptoms. We will also be monitoring the health care workers who have cared for and continue to care for this patient. Since returning from China, the patient has had very limited movement outside her home. Now that this test is positive, we will continue to collect and confirm even more information about her activities and contacts. But we know already, for example, that she has not taken public transportation. She has not attended any large gatherings. And actually, to our best knowledge at this point, she has not had extended close contact with anyone outside her home since returning from China 
and prior to admission to the health care system. So this is all very reassuring in terms of infection risk to the general public, which again remains low nationally and locally. Any time a new virus emerges, we are reminded of how small our world is and of how cr critical it is to invest in building strong public health systems. I want to thank the federal, state, and many local partners who have worked together and prepared, not just to respond to this case, but over many years to ensure the Chicago area is well prepared to respond to emerging infectious diseases. I'd now like to hand it over to Dr. Jennifer Layden, the Chief Medical Officer and State Epidemiologist at the Illinois Department of Public Health. Sure. My name is Dr. Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N, Arwady, A-R-W-A-D-Y. I'm an MD, and I'm the Commissioner at the Chicago Department of Public Health. Thank you, Allison. Hi, my name is Jen Layden. I'm the Chief Medical Officer and State Epidemiologist for the Illinois Department of Public Health. Yes, Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, Layden, L-A-Y-D-E-N. I would like to start by thanking our Governor, Governor Prinsker, State Leadership, and IDPH's Director, Dr. Dr. Ngazi Ezike, as well as the Chicago Department of Public Health, other local health departments in Illinois, healthcare partners across the state, and the CDC for the coordinated and collaborative work on this rapidly evolving situation. It is because of the diligent work by healthcare professionals that we were able to identify this confirmed travel associated case of the novel coronavirus quickly while also taking measures to prevent others from being exposed. IDPH has been closely monitoring this international outbreak and began proactively preparing in the event the outbreak expanded. We began providing CDC guidance, resources, and recommendations to local health departments, hospitals, and clinicians across the state, and dedicated or developed a dedicated web page with resources for the public and health partners. We have sent several health alerts and updates to local health departments clinicians and hospitals across the state and held a webinar for local health departments this week which had over 200 participants and a webinar for clinicians and hospitals which had over 500 participants. We will continue with frequent scheduled communication with local health departments, clinical partners and other key state partners. Coordination between the hospital, local and state health department allowed specimens to be shipped and tested at the CDC quickly. This coordination between providers, hospitals, and public health is critical for our continued effort to, te to best respond and reduce further transmission. The Illinois Department of Public Health will continue to partner with, C with the CDC and has invited a CDC team out to our state to assist with this investigation. IDPH is ready to bring testing online to our state labs once the test is available from the CDC. We will continue to communicate and coordinate with our local health departments, and numerous clinical partners as we respond to this evolving situation. I will now turn this over to Andrew Velasquez from the Chicago Department of Aviation. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Andrew Velasquez, A-N-D-R-E-W, Velasquez, V like in Victor, E-L-A-S-Q-U-E-Z, Managing Deputy Commissioner for Operations, Safety, and Security for the Chicago Department of Aviation. The CDA has no higher priority than the safety and well-being of the traveling public, as well as our airport community. From the moment information came to light about this particular strain of coronavirus, CDA safety and security team has been closely monitoring the situation and interfacing with our federal and public health par partners, particularly CDC, CBP, and Dr. Arwadi's team at the Chicago Department of public health. We wanted to be sure we'd be able to support any special efforts related to the coronavirus while at the same time maintaining normal airport operations. Our experience in these matters is unfortunately extensive and hard earned, whether it's a response activation related to MERS, Ebola, or even measles. But we also have deep relationships with our federal and local partners and are in a position to provide logistical support at a moment's notice, as has been the case here. 
Once CDC determined that O'Hare would be participating in this effort, we ensured they and CBP could stand up and enhance the risk assessment screening process immediately, and those assessments have been underway since Wednesday. In addition to our valued travelers, we are working hard to ensure the tens of thousands of individuals who make their living at O'Hare Airport have the most up-to-date information on the coronavirus as well as ongoing efforts to keep the public and our airport family safe. We are grateful to our public health partners who have been an excellent resource in assuring our airport community at and their risk of transmitting the virus is extremely low. Later this morning, our CDA emergency management team will convene a briefing call for airport stakeholders, and we will be distributing additional information about the coronavirus to all airport employees, as well as reminders about what steps all of us can take to maintain good health. We are committed to providing both information and reassurance, and in this case, those go hand in hand. Thank you very much, and we will now open it up for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Uh, the CDC continues to screen at the airport. So um, two parts to that question. So on, on the question about um, traveling before a patient has symptoms. So this is one of the reasons that the airport screening, while important, is only one piece of the public health plan around making sure that we uh, appropriately detect people um, and, and, and treat them. Based on what is known now about this novel coronavirus, um, the CDC does not believe that in the time before symptoms have developed, um, patients are likely to be able to, to, to be contagious, able to be transmitting um, coronavirus. This is based on what we know about other coronaviruses. So folks may know this new novel coronavirus is in the same family as coronaviruses that include the common cold, as well as that include MERS or SARS. So um, given that it was a number of days between the time that this patient entered the U.S. Um, and the time that she started to develop symptoms, um, we, again, based on what we know now, are confident that um, she was not at risk of travel. We will obviously continue to discuss this with CDC. We're getting more information about this virus every day, but that's, that's the current understanding. You are watching a live press con conference right now at uh, the headquarters for OEMC so, here in um, Chicago. This is a press conference that's this patient. Um, but what I can tell you is that uh, broadly the symptoms that we're concerned about in this setting would be fever, cough, um, or shortness of breath. Um, the patient uh, approximately three to four days after she uh, came back into the U.S. She started to, to develop some low-grade symptoms. As you heard me say, um, she really had very little travel outside the home uh, during that time period. Um, and she called ahead and did seek care about three to four days af after that. Um, so um, she, again, is clinically doing well um, and is stable in the hospital, really, because we want to make sure that we're monitoring for infection control. Yeah, so um, certainly this is of great interest. Um, you heard Dr. Layden say that the CDC team is actually um, arriving, and some of them are, are even here now to assist with the investigation. Um, all of that information has, you know, is being collected and collated. We're interested in a lot of details um, about what her activities were in, in China at the same way that we're interested um, in what they are here in Chicago. So we'll be collecting all of that. Right. Sure. 
Yep. So, um, this, so the, based on the CDC recommendations, uh, the screening protocols that are in place at the five U.S. airports, um, including O'Hare, have been limited to patients with travel originating in Wuhan, China. Wuhan has been very much the epicenter of this um, outbreak in China. And so um, until we get uh, other guidance from CDC, uh, those continue to be patients that we would be screening. So um, we are not releasing publicly the details of the airlines, but I can assure you um, all of that data is collected, has been shared back with the CDC. Um, they will be using it to make determinations about whether there need to be follow-up related to passengers on the plane, et cetera. Again, this patient was not symptomatic when she was traveling, which lowers the risk. Sure. Um, so not infectious at the time of traveling, no role for doing anything in that particular airplane, for example. The main next steps for us now, um, there's both related to the patient and the public health work. First of all, um, to ensure that the patient is getting the appropriate clinical care um, and is in a hospital setting um, that is experienced in infection control. Um, with the CDC team, there will be some follow-up uh, testing of the patient. We'll be learning about um, getting more information to understand how long um, testing may be positive, some of that information, um, and mainly just um, making sure the patient is well cared for. We'll also, public health will be working closely with close contacts of this patient. Um, so we um, have a sense of some of those already. I said there are a limited number. Um, and we will be following up with those folks, um, looking for symptoms, um, you know, quick to test if there were any concern. Um, and then also we'll be working with the healthcare workers who have cared for and continue to care for this patient. They've been using the appropriate procedures around infection control, but obviously we'll want to be doing close monitoring. Um, um, when it's the second case in the U.S., there are a lot of questions about things like how long this will continue. Um, I can assure you we will be following the CDC guidance all the way um, and doing everything we need to do to make sure that the, uh, that the risk to the general public in Chicago remains low. So with regard to protective measures, we obviously take our guidance from the Chicago Department of Public Health as well as the CDC. And so, as you heard earlier, uh, the risk of infection right now is low, right? But what we have been doing is convening conference calls with all of our airport workers to ensure that we are giving them the latest up-to-date information with regard to what's taking place, um, what sort of protective measures, if any, and again, at this point in time, as was mentioned earlier, you know, this is the cold and flu season, so we're asking folks just to be cognizant of that and to take the regular precautions that they would uh, during the cold and flu season. So uh, we are uh, posting messages on our, our, our message boards in Terminal 5, uh, as well as in the federal inspection area, which is owned by Customs, right? And so we're posting those messages. We also have information on our CDA website, right, for people to actually go and acquire information to learn more about what's taking place with regard uh, to this particular coronavirus. And so, um, yeah, we've taken very proactive measures to ensure that we are reaching out to the airport community, particularly our critical airport stakeholders and our travelers to make sure that they have all the same information that we're presenting to all of you now. Yeah, so th that is why we have to have a multi-phasic approach to this. Um, and so um, making sure that, for example, um, people with travel histories are hearing this sort of news actually raises awareness um, that if they develop symptoms, what they need to do, um, uh, really reach out and seek care. A lot of the work that the public health department and partners have been doing um, is around this education piece for our health care providers, making sure that like in this case, um, if a patient comes in, we're asking appropriately about travel history, um, and if there 
there has been travel um, to, you know, to Wuhan, China, um, or contact um, that is otherwise concerning with a person who's been diagnosed, um, that, that the um, clinician is quickly reaching out to public health, and we're having these conversations about whether we need to do additional workup. Right. Um, so Wuhan alone is a city of more than 11 million people. It's four times the size of Chicago. It's a global city. Chicago's a global city. We know that, that you know, we have, we have traveled broadly, so um, we have been prepared, uh, you know, to potentially expect a, a travel-associated case. Um, so in that respect, we're certainly not surprised to have a case. I think if folks have been following the international news, you've seen that China has increasingly been establishing limits on travel um, within some of its own cities, um, which would also impact, um, you know, spread of the virus international, presumably. But um, CDC is paying very close attention, uh, you know, to this question. Um, I'd say that's broadly in line with what we've seen with these other coronaviruses. You know, I, I worked actually for the CDC prior to being at the Chicago Department of Public Health. I worked on the ground in Saudi Arabia when MERS was emerging with CDC. I worked on the ground in Liberia when Ebola was emerging with CDC. You don't always have the full answers um, early on in an outbreak, um, in an international outbreak, but always we're using the data that's available and basing it on what we know about other similar viruses. So um, the CDC will be conservative on this, as will the Chicago and Illinois Departments of Public Health. So our, our biggest concern would be um, truly household contacts, people who are spending um, extended periods of time having one-on-one -on -one conversations, being um, in close proximity. Uh, based on what we know now, this virus is spread through coughing and sneezing, droplet-type precautions. So um, we do not have, to be clear, some of the same concerns that we had when we were talking about Ebola a few years ago. This is a um, virus that um, any hospital has uh, the capability any hospital that, that can accept um, EMS uh, transfers has the potential to safely um, uh, isolate patients. Yeah, so we are having lots of conversation right now, getting some details around that. I can tell you it's limited, um, and we'll be working with CDC to make exactly these determinations. Um, who needs what kind of monitoring, how long. Yeah, so it's premature to speculate. Um, there are plans to serially uh, test this patient um, and to send those samples down to CDC. Um, the plan would not be to release this patient until she is no longer um, showing any signs of being infectious, but I can't predict at that point how long that will be. Yep. So um, if folks heard on the, on the telebriefing this morning, the CDC did say that they have, um, they have 63 patients under investigation across the U.S. Uh, from 22 states. So this gives you a sense that um, although this case is second, it, we would not necessarily be surprised to see some of these other labs turn positive in the next few days. Um, we've talked a lot about how much we want to share related to um, uh, patient conversations or patients that may be under investigation. Um, and we've decided at this point that um, we would be quick to share right away information about a confirmed case, just like we're doing now. Um, there can be a lot of rumors and a lot of misinformation that's flying. The Chicago Department of Public Health and our partners are having conversations every day with providers here in Chicago who are talking to, with their patients about travel to China. A, a patient traveling to China does not mean um, that they need a test, for example. A test does not mean that it's going to be a patient. Um, and so that's, that's our um, decision at the moment, we'll continue to follow CDC guidance um, around that. Final question. Uh, uh, yes, there were not other travelers from the Chicago or Illinois area. Thank you.